Great. So, uh, Adamus, the Europe seems like mm -hmm. really going towards crisis. We are, uh, yesterday I was having another session and uh, I mentioned that uh, it seems like the doomsday, but, but it's not there yet. It feels like it, it uh, but also it, yeah. it feels so strange. What, what is your input about? Uh, do you think that Europe is in crisis right now? Of course, um, of course it is in crisis. There is a lot of going on about uh, European Union at the moment. Uh, we can start from the problem of the refugees from Syria, go to the Brexit, then we'll have the banking crisis, and the most recent one is the Turkish uh, coup that has happened the previous week, and uh, the political events that are developing. There is a um, diplomatic crisis between Turkey and European Union, so there are a lot of things going on. Uh, European Union seems disintegrating because UK is leaving, some other countries are talking about making a referendum as well and uh, if we go to uh, economic and monetary issues the central bank uh, interest rate at, is at zero percent they try to think about how they can add more stimulus adding more uh, buying bonds doesn't make any sense anymore because uh, it doesn't uh, help recover of the peripheral countries. Greece still has issues, uh, debt issues. They are trying to get up, but that seems very difficult. And uh, if we look at the amount of the debt that they have, it seems impossible for them to pay them back. And we have now Italy uh, on the line as well, yeah? Yeah, we we'll have Italy as well coming up now with banking crisis. There are a lot of issues in the European Union happening now, and personally, I would. Uh, it's surprising that the Euro USD is at 110 at the moment, and would you uh, everybody. Buy Euro right now, would you buy Euro right now? I wouldn't buy Euro. <laughs> and, and I wouldn't buy you Euro. In, and uh, you live in Europe, mm -hmm. right? Sorry. You live in Europe, but you wouldn't buy Euro. Yeah, yeah I live in Europe. I hold Euros, but. Uh, the euro seems like it's on a, it's going to into downside uh, momentum, and uh, we are. Exp I'm, I'm expecting tomorrow to see what is going to happen with what Mario Draghi will say, and uh, they will have after the this central bank meeting tomorrow they will have eight weeks break, so they will come back in September again. Do you, and, do you think that uh, yeah. ECB would strike during summer? I don't think so. I don't think so. They will do something more at the moment. They also uh, going to watch events and what is going to happen. If we have something major in in August happening, they are going to strike. But um, <clears throat> from uh, from my perspective, uh, if I don't have any, I don't see any comment from their side. I don't see any report from their side, and I don't expect that they will strike. Let I believe that also me, they are very confused. <laughs> let me just take you uh, a little uh, to some uh, some different uh, part. You know, mm -hmm. it seems like central banks have uh, lost their way, well, at least from my perspective, and mm -hmm. uh, they are afraid to act. A good example, BOE. Yeah. Bringing you to to that uh, that side of the you know world, why? Did the BOE not cut the rates last week? Bank of England, for those of you who doesn't understand what is BOE. Um, for that, I don't have an answer why they didn't cut the rates. What they said is that they wanted to wait and see developments. Okay, I understand that they didn't have a prime minister at the moment that they had the meeting. Uh, oh, actually, they had a newly appointed Prime Minister at the time that they had the meeting. So they are most likely expecting to see what is going to happen. Like ECMB, they are confused of what is happening around. Now the Brexit uh, fears have faded. We see that the GBP USD has recovered up to a point. So they are also waiting to see. Yesterday we had inflation releases in UK and actually the inflation was higher than expected. So that is something that is likely to limit 
the ability of the Bank of England to add stimulus. Um, so the, it's a lot of things happening around. And also, we have high geopolitical risk. However, that is not reflected in the market with the Japanese yen at the moment. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a very uh, mixed up forex market at the moment with the central banks being not being uh, very aggressive in their decisions. Even they have actually they have been very conservative in their decisions. Uh, we have been expecting the Federal Reserve to take action and increase rates uh, in, in their last meeting. We have been expecting that since January, but they didn't do it. And uh, now the um, expectations for Federal Reserve to increase rates is coming back. Uh, that's why we, see, we saw the US dollar uh, going into four month high uh, yesterday. So yeah, it's a bit of, uh, uh, for the central bank, difficult task, very difficult task at the moment. And also another thing that uh, I didn't mention is that uh, geopolitical risk is not only high because of Turkey. We saw Korea and doing some nuclear tests. When they have been doing this in the past, the, Jap the yen has been increasing. However, it didn't happen this time. And uh, the main reason for that is that investors are expecting the Bank of Japan to add uh, fiscal, uh, to add monetary stimulus. Also, they expect the government to add fiscal stimulus. Imagine if they don't act like what happened with Bank of England, where the USD yen will go. So at the moment, the USD, uh, the USD yen has discounted um, that the Bank of Japan will add monetary stimulus. If they don't do that, the USD yen will uh, will fall will fall a lot. All right. So, given this uh, current market uh, environment, what currency, uh, which currencies, for your experience, should be winning? Not pairs, currencies. Okay. Um, I would look. At the gold, okay. Uh, gold made a retracement. Uh, has made a retracement in the last two weeks and found a support at one point at uh, one thousand three hundred twenty-four point fifty. Uh, in the day, we see that the gold is moving in consolidation in range. Uh, one concern about gold is that the U.S. dollar is strengthening, so. I believe that gold will uh, gain demand and uh, is likely to go up and perhaps uh, will go again up to 1,371. However, um, the US dollar is strengthening at the moment because we have these expectations for a rate hike by the Federal Reserve. Do you and, really uh, think, uh, yeah. since you're talking about it, do you think the, the Fed would be actually hiking the rates? Personally, I don't think so. They are, they are talking about September or December. Uh, they may increase the rates, but uh, everything is based on expectations at the moment because there is the the price that uh, there is a 20% chance for the Federal Reserve to increase the rates. Mm -hmm. All right. And we need to see the developments. We need to see the developments. And I don't expect at the moment, as it is, I don't expect the US dollar, the Federal Reserve to increase rates. But we need to see, for example, in two weeks, we'll have the Northern payrolls again for July. And uh, we need to follow the developments. All right. Now, uh, let's let's briefly, you know, uh, go through three currency pairs, fundamentally and mm -hmm. technically, and see uh, if we can help these uh, people uh, following us. We have quite many uh, people from different backgrounds. I see that 13% uh, of the participants has been in the market between the last uh, one year. 75% of the people have been uh, trading for the last one to three years. And another 13% have been uh, trading uh, for the last three to five years period. So we, we don't have many people with, with, uh, with an in-depth market experience from uh, my, my personal opinion. Uh, we just according to the poll results that we just did. So uh, looking into these uh, market developments, uh, let's let's briefly go through the cable, which pound U.S. dollar. Uh, we 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 should look into 
overall Brexit uh, news uh, and events happening, despite the fact that the fear is fading away. Uh, why is it that the the cable appreciated? And what are the trade opportunities on it from your uh, your experience and your expectation perspective? Okay, so um, why it has uh, recovered? The main reason is that the Brexit fears have been fading uh, and uh, the market has been oversold. So we saw investors unloading their short positions, first of all, and then because of the Brexit fears have been fading, uh, we saw a new buys coming in and the market and the GBP USD has recovered up to 134.87. It made this recovery which is slightly above 23.6%, more specifically is between 38.2 and 23.6% of the Fibonacci uh, retracement levels. And actually now what I see in the intraday, it's a likely head and shoulders. Um, so this is increasing the bearish expectations that I have at the moment for the GBP USD. Uh, yesterday, as I said before, we saw some inflation data become, being released um, higher than expected. So this is actually decreasing expectations for the Bank of England to uh, cut rates. But this uh, is not limiting this. There are still Brexit, uh, the Brexit is going to happen. We saw the new Prime Minister appointing Boris Johnson as the Foreign Minister, which was the main supporter and the, one of the most strongest supporters of the campaign for voting Brexit. And, and uh, can, I, mm -hmm. can I disturb you for just a second? There are rumors sure. that Boris Johnson said he regrets supporting Brexit. Mm -hmm. How do you think that if that uh, rumors are, are really reflected into act, actual announcement from him, how do you think that it would impact the, the, uh, the British pound? If he regret about it and uh, he is willing to act on his regrets, then most likely we will see another referendum I mean, or he will push for another referendum. But uh, you know, these politicians are very selfish. They're not going to admit that they regret of doing something. So I think he will, uh, if, he, if he has regret, the biggest punishment for him is to be a foreign minister when the UK will leave the European Union. But uh, I don't think so that um, uh, he's going to, um, to make any public announcement that he regrets about it. So eventually that is going to remain as a rumor and uh, what we will see is negotiations between the UK and the EU and how they are going to handle this. If we have a breakdown in the negotiations then that will be very bad for the Euro and for the sterling as well. And um, when I say very bad it, I mean that the GBP USD will fall and uh, likely before uh, even fall below uh, its lowest point that it did on the referendum date. Um, to add something more about the GBP USD, today we look about uh, for the claim account change which is expected at 4.1k and we look at the release of the unemployment rate as well. Uh, keep in mind that this uh, data will be released for the June month. The June was the main month of the Brexit campaign, Brexit referendum campaigns. So it is likely to see um, negative releases and that will, act, will weigh further on the UK sterling. So most likely I would expect the GBP USD to break the support at 130.64 today and uh, it could give some short opportunities in today's, in the intraday. Based on the, um, based on the head and shoulder formation that potentially we are seeing, do you actually expect uh, the euro dollar, uh, sorry, uh, British mm -hmm. pound, uh, US dollar to hit the 28, uh, 29, 70 and 28, uh, 80 level? Would that be feasible? I would target? expect, I would expect the first uh, support to be at 130, which is a psychological level as well. Mm -hmm. So it is more likely to see 130 today than uh, 
see the price is going above 151.16. And uh, about the 121.970, it can happen. But, uh, and of course, there is a lot of volatility in the GBPUSD, so it's, many, it's very likely that uh, if we go to 130, uh, prices could penetrate this psychological level, this psychological support level, and go towards 129.70. 128.50, I think it's still uh, far away. There is a lot of support uh, orders there, buying orders there. So uh, if we see prices below 130, um, most likely some um, buying limit orders will trigger in the market. And uh, that is going to provide some support for the GBP USD today. Uh, nevertheless, I keep a bearish view on the GBP USD based on the head and shoulders. Uh, on, and on the news that I'm expecting, which I consider we might see more uh, worse than expected news. All right. And of course, we'll have the US dollar strengthening. That's another factor coming in for the, um, for the GBP USD. Good points. Uh, thank you so much about it. Uh, I, I am personally thinking uh, and joining on everything uh, every single point that you have uh, you have just commented about it uh, and i think that the the risk is more than the reward on, on the bridge pound right now uh, personally i wouldn't trade it however the uh, i also see a good uh, potential buy limit order pos uh, possibilities especially from the yeah. from the level of 120, uh, 129 uh, to 129.30 levels. So uh, basically, mm -hmm. within these levels, uh, as you said, uh, limit orders are expected to be triggered, therefore pushing it uh, upwards, unless we see some uh, extremely negative uh, news coming out. Let's move on uh, from the bridge pound and uh, look into the Turkish lira. Uh, I know because of the geography that you are, you are in, Turkey has a has a big impact on on the stability of your country as well, uh, namely yes. Cyprus. Uh, mm -hmm. I know probably it may it will make you also uh, well a little uh, well uncomfortable. Let's call it. No, I what, don't. What, I, I'm, not, your, I'm not becoming. What is I'm your? I'm not becoming uncomfortable, but uh, because I'm I'm. Based on trading, I don't want to give any opinion because could be biased. All right, I'm not going to ask uh, about trading for you. I'm interested okay. about your opinion as a Cypriot okay. about the Turkish coup impact in Cyprus becoming united. Uh, for that one, well, I am positive or negative impact. I have multiple scenarios in my mind for that. First of all, okay, we see that Erdogan uh, makes some suspicious moves and he wants to strengthen his position in, uh, in Turkey. He wants to become uh, even stronger than what he is. He has been governing Turkey for how long? Many years, 15 years now. So, and uh, he's becoming, in my opinion, arrogant. But, uh, and that could not have a good impact in Cyprus as well. I, I read today a report that there have been also arrest, people arrested in Cyprus, in, uh, in the occupied or North Cyprus, there have been uh, Turkish officials arrested, that they have been in Cyprus as well. And uh, already we see an impact. I have friends that are Turkish Cypriots and uh, we discuss, they're very worried about uh, the situation. And uh, they are also expecting to see what is going to happen. Uh, what we have in mind, what I have in mind, I believe everybody has it in mind as well, uh, about the coup and how it was done. And, uh, but there is a scenario, an optimistic scenario, uh, when, because the previous year's solution, is, mm, the political solution in Cyprus didn't come because uh, military people were against a solution in Cyprus. So I would like to see what Erdogan will do when he uh, eliminates the military power in Turkey because now he's uh, eliminating the influence and the power that the military officials have in Turkey. So 
Uh, I would like to see what he's going to be, what is going to be his plan about the Turkish Cypriot people mainly, because uh, Turkish Cypriot side is the people that they are getting a lot of um, influence from Turkey, and in many cases they don't have the ability to decide about their own uh, future. So uh, there is optimistic scenario that Erdogan will give more freedom to them to decide and uh, about their future. And uh, if we see something like that, then political solution in Cyprus would be more realistic. All right. Okay. Uh, I promise not to ask you about the trade opportunities on it, but uh, nonetheless, I, I'm going to be talking about it myself since I'm following mm -hmm. the news uh, carefully. Despite the fact that media is painting out a good image about the Turkish economy and how the Central Bank of Turkey, etc., has been giving the, the news that they'll do all their best to, to make things stable and uh, keep things properly, you got to understand one thing, guys, if you are trading US dollar, Turkish lira, or any other Turkish lira uh, pairs, that the economy in Turkey has been shocked, literally. It has been electri uh, electrified. And uh, the model that we are looking into is that uh, the Turkish lira must be uh, depreciating furthermore. Uh, I'm not saying should be. I'm uh, re focus on the word must. So... It is a must that we will be seeing the Turkish lira uh, depreciating further down. And uh, that means that US dollar, Turkish lira, Euro, uh, Euro Turkish lira, etc. should be up. Uh, at the moment, I'm looking into uh, USD Turkish lira. And the only thing that I can uh, really be talking about for this pair is the, the fact that the depreciation has not been completed yet. Uh, what I really mean with it is that we are basically at the level of uh, June 2005, uh, well, highs, uh, even lower than that. And in June 2005, uh, 2015, sorry, uh, we didn't have as much instability in Turkish economy as we have right now. So if the market is just below uh, the, the June 2015 highs, it means that uh, we are we are just looking into another breakout. So the targets that we are going to be looking into will be during the vicinity of uh, 30770 level. So if we see a break above the 30770 level on USD Turkish lira, it is extremely likely that we will be seeing further bullish attempts from this pair. And uh, to be more precise, this further bullish attempts will be at uh, 309.40, 314.70, and 319.90. I repeat again, uh, 309.40, 70 level is going to be the immediate target, and afterwards, 314.40 uh, to 80 level, more or less, will be the next target, and 319.90 uh, uh, level will be the, the third target. If you look into these numbers, they remind you, or they should uh, you mind, uh, remind you that these numbers are psychological levels. Not only that, uh, the 3, 14, 90 level, 80 level, is also a Fibonacci retracement zone, a significant one. Uh, and we should be seeing that level to be, to be triggered in order for us to be able to take a tradable action on it. So... That's that's my uh, my two cent on on this uh, pair, and uh, if the if you are going to be asking about where would I be looking for a significant retracement or, or or change of the trend possibly, my answer would be uh, only after uh, three twenty one thirty level. So until the the market reaches the three twenty one thirty level, look for uh, bullish levels. And in the meantime, if you see today, tomorrow, the pair touching the 298.90 level to 299.99 level, so within this range, this is likely to become a buy level for, uh, for the Turkish Lira traders. It is going to be a significant level for, for you to take advantage of it. Uh, just for your inf information, we, we took advantage of the market yesterday from 297.40 level. 
and uh, we we bought it uh, until three or four level, three or four forty level more or less. And uh, this was our trade entry yesterday. So we are going to be looking uh, more uh, more of these opportunities. Now, Adamus, uh, let's let's look on uh, on to euro dollar as well. Uh, we said that mm -hmm. Europe. Europe seems like it is in a in a bigger crisis than uh, the the ECB and the rest of the central banks are trying to paint out for the media. Uh, what mm -hmm. trade opportunities do you have for euro dollar? Okay, first of all, uh, let me go on with the weekly, daily, and hourly, and uh, we can see that it's on uh, on the weekly in the range mainly, and. Uh, even so in a range so the euro usd is trading in a range and in consolidation uh, trading patterns for the last uh, year actually and uh, in the intraday we can see that it has as of now as we have been talking went below the 1.10 uh, support level so this level in the intraday has been considered as a psychological strong support level and now we see prices are uh, have been penetrating that. Uh, I keep a bearish view on the Euro USD, and I would have expected the Euro USD to be lower actually, as I said before. So the Euro USD view that I have is bearish, and uh, given that the US dollar, as we said, is strengthening at the moment, we saw some uh, negative news yesterday for the Euro as well. This EU economic sentiment was for the German and for the European for the Eurozone was below expectations. This has added some weight to EURUSD. Uh, there is a moderate risk averse in the market, and um, the, so the indices have been flat mainly. Uh, we saw some geopolitical risk rising. So I would expect the EURUSD to go lower, and for today, uh, Euro USD has already breached the 1.10. That that could be seen as an entry signal as well for the market, and uh, most likely we're going to see prices going towards 1.0913 for today. Uh, if that is considered a big, a large uh, target, we can set the take profit at 1.0950. And that will improve our success rate as well in the trading. Uh, of course, the news are for tomorrow. We have the European Central Bank meeting, and um, also tomorrow we have the U.S. jobless claims um, for the U.S. dollar. And on Friday we we'll see for the PMI reports. We have the Eurozone flash manufacturing PMI and services PMI as well. These are not on um, Friday are not major, but they are going to impact the market as well. Uh, to close, I have a bare review of the Euro USD. I believe that uh, what's happening in Turkey at the moment causes investors to leave uh, Turkish assets and return to Europe. That is a reason for holding the Euro USD not to go lower. That's it. Yago? All right, thank you so much. Uh, well, looking onto euro dollar from my side, uh, I would like to also share my screen for just a second. Great. So looking into the the euro dollar uh, right now, I I have two of these levels that are appearing to be significant for me. These are uh, these are also true Fibonacci retracement zones or true true Fibonacci wave levels that uh, we should be looking into, uh, and they are in line with what you have just uh, shared, Adamos. Uh, if you are looking into euro dollar, uh, the two pivotal levels that we have ahead of us are the 108.85 level, which is 10% Fibonacci retracement zone. Uh, I know if you are not familiar with true Fibonacci waves that I'm using, uh, this level probably would act like a strange level for you. Meanwhile, the second significant level is is the negative 10% uh, and it is uh, 1.0770 level, more or less. And if we go backwards, I just put it on four hour. I don't trade on four hour, but I just put it on it so that we can see it clearly a little bit. And you can see how significant is the 10% level. 
it has been a pivotal level and you go backwards each time the market trades between the negative 10 and uh, positive 10 percent Fibonacci retracement zone the market uh, well gets ready for a breakout uh, and it becomes a significant one so it is likely that we are going to be seeing this level acting uh, strongly so therefore I would be looking for uh, putting my targets somewhere between these two levels probably I would be aiming for actually 1.0870 level to, to stay on the safe side if I'm shorting it and uh, from there onwards I would look for at least a correction wave on a, on a bullish side uh, despite the fact that we are looking into bearish market uh, that's likely that uh, we are going to be seeing well some kind of retracement from there onwards but bear in mind you have to be careful uh, between these two levels so 1.08 uh, level and 1.0770 level this is the this is the basically corrective level uh, just very briefly as well to to show you the the US dollar Turkish lira 2 over here the reason why i'm looking for a buy opportunity from the 300 level is number one because of the fact that we have the psychologic uh, support level there and we have 50 uh, simple moving average as well 50 hour moving average if you make this 20 and let's also make this 100 you can see that if if i'm mistaken and the 3 uh, 300 level is not really sustaining then it is likely that we are going to be see the well the pair finding its massive support and the most important support at its next psychological retracement zone and uh, that is the 294 uh, 95 more or less 295 level uh, and it also falls right on to 100 uh, moving average as well so this is the time for for questions